Welcome to Friday Conversation, presented by Friday Culture. Each episode, we will invite people from all walks of life to share their insights about various issues in Hong Kong. Today, we are glad to have Mr. Andrew Lam, newly elected Legislative Councillor, to be our guest. Good morning, Henry. Hello, Andrew. Uh, congratulations to you. And uh, how's life in LegCo after having been in office for two months? First of all, thank you. And uh, I still consider myself a freshman because, uh, you know, again, it's just two months. And, uh, and it's actually very unfortunate because of the pandemic. Uh, you know, I still haven't got the chance to shake hands with each and every <laughs> one of my colleagues in LegCo. Uh, but that said, it's actually an amazing composition in a way. Uh, I have a lot to learn from them because, uh, practically speaking, it's from all walks of life. People got, uh, uh, you know, directly elected by the uh, geographical constituency. Uh, you know, 30 of us got uh, different functional constituencies mm -hmm. background. And 40 of us actually have a very wide, you know, uh, spectrum of interest to uh, look after because it actually represents the entire, you know, uh, the, the, sit, uh, the interests of the entire city. So I, I think, uh, you know, most of us do have uh, specialization in terms of, uh, you know, knowledge or skill sets or interest. So I, I think uh, we expect, you know, a uh, huge lot of, uh, you know, interaction uh, hopefully in the future when the pandemic dies down a bit. Well, we've known for uh, many years. So why did you decide to run for LegCo? Now, I think uh, we, we have to look at the big picture. Now, seriously speaking, uh, if I tell everyone that I have a strong interest in, you know, turning myself into a politician at the age uh, of 60 plus, <laughs> then you won't believe in me. Uh, I'm professional by training. I have a heart for Hong Kong particularly on development and housing, you know, and anything related to, you know, city management. So that's my interest. But you, you look at the big picture, particularly in the past, you know, several years, that practically, you know, everything stopped and were put to the halt because of the political situation. Uh, I strongly believe that we are seriously lagging behind and, you know, uh, if there is no kind of uh, restructuring of the system that allows people like myself to focus on what we're good at, then uh, I, I think we will just keep wasting, you know, everybody's, you know, uh, strength. But you know, uh, fortunately, we were allowed that opportunity. So I, I think, you know, uh, since serving in uh, the community in different aspect, in different form. And uh, now we've got the, the uh, so-called uh, new channel. Mm. Uh, election committee. Uh, yes, the election Sector. committee. And which I don't really have to kind of uh, uh, bias towards certain, you know, uh, sectoral interests. Uh, I can really kind of look at the big picture of Hong Kong. So I would say, OK, let's give it a try. And I think that's... Uh, a good opportunity that we, we can uh, offer much more than the past several years. Well, you have uh, more than 30 years of experience as a planner, and uh, including as a consultant, working at uh, statutory bodies and business sector. So why do you choose to be a planner in the first place? I understand that a uh, planner was not even a subject in Hong Kong U back that time. Oh, uh, you're absolutely right. Um, actually, when, when I was still in secondary school, my interest was primarily Chinese language and Chinese history. Mm. But you know, those days, you know, parents like their kids to, you know, be professional. Yeah. Uh, my kind of uh, secondary interest is actually ge geography and, you know, uh, political economy. Mm -hmm. kind of things. So I, I did ask my, you know, teachers those days and say, oh, well, what's the closest, you know, mm -hmm. professions you, mm -hmm. you can suggest? And then she said, well, you can try town planning. But then I asked her, you know, what's town planning? Well, you, you got to find it out yourself. <laughs> right? you know, not to mention Hong Kong. Even now, I, I went to UK mm. uh, in the late 70s. And, and even those days, as planning is not that popular as a profession. And there was no plan department in Hong Kong government as no, well. No, no, no. Uh, there's only a very small town planning office. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think, uh, you know, planning as a profession has evolved uh, through time. And, and uh, gladly speaking, we, we see its development and the recognition from the community as so. well. 
Hong Kong has claimed itself to be one of the most capitalist city in the world. So uh, how planning could help Hong Kong? Well, look at uh, the basic law. Actually, you know, uh, the capitalist status uh, is clearly stated in the basic law in Chapter 1. So uh, with that said, uh, planning has never ever been a socialist game as such. You know, look at you know, the Western world or wherever, the capitalist society or a capital, uh, socialist society, there are planners. There will be planning. I, I think, let, let's put things into context. Planning is all about distribution of resources, particularly limited resources. Right. And, you know, why planning? Uh, my quick answer is that uh, you will ask anyone on the street, they know very much about what poor planning is about. They complained about right. traffic congestion. <laughs> they complained about housing shortages. They complained about, you know, the lack of social services around the community, that kind of things, right? But you ask them, you know, what good planning is about, it is much more sophisticated mm, problem. Right. So uh, it's an easy, you know, answer in a way at, uh, you know, the daily life level. You know, how planning, uh, particularly good planning, can contribute to the betterment of you know, people's livelihood in addressing different kinds of problems. Um, and you think about, you know, uh, those days, uh, back in, you know, uh, say, for example, 1950s and that kind of things, there were was actually limited uh, plans or planning actions. Um, and, you know, population Russian for whatever reasons, people, you know, reside in squatters at, you know, different places in, in the territory. There's no planned water supply mm. or sewage or drainage, that kind of thing. Now, is a very simple example of how to illustrate how life could be you know, without planning. Right. right. <laughs> so uh, I hope that you know, is a good enough answer uh, to your question. But you know, uh, modern uh, planning uh, in a more sophisticated way, particularly about strategic planning, is a different matter. It is about you know how to kind of uh, fully utilize uh, you know public authority to improve livelihood with vision. Now then, whose vision uh, is always challenging, yes. and that's why we you know have all kinds of proper engagement activities, that kind of things. There will be proper debate on different policies. You know, so it's it's not about drawing a blueprint. You know. It, the English wording is actually much more precise than Chinese wording because we talk about planning with an ING. It's a mm -hmm. continuous you process. Know, process. And then supply is one of your priorities in your platform. Yes, yes. So do you have any new ideas how to expedite land supply so that you know, we can have more affordable housing? No, I, I think when we talk about expedition, we, we have to understand you know, where the problems come from. You know? uh, you know, Hong Kong in the past several decades has developed itself as an extremely sophisticated, uh, sophisticated you know, decision-making system. You know, uh, rule of law, of course, is very important, and we have all those necessary in, uh, legislation to kind of make sure the process is, is, you know, is fair and transparent. I don't really think that we have to change that, mm. right? Uh, but there are still ample room. Uh, in kind of uh, streamlining the process. Uh, again, we should focus on you know, repetitive uh, monitoring, repetitive engagement, uh, and re repetitive process uh, even you know, conducted by each and every individual government departments. You know? Say, for example, uh, in the past, uh, when we talk about the, the, the three you know, uh, driving cards, kind of leading the development management system, land administration, mm -hmm. planning, and building, right. right? And they have different definitions of open space. <laughs> now, why is that so, mm. right? And same thing uh, when, when you conduct uh, a planning studies uh, or any kind of conceptual uh, planning studies at the very early stage, we have to kind of conduct different kinds of impact assessments. No, that's fair. but you know, uh, if we are working on, uh, say, for example, trans uh, traffic impact assessment in a particular district, 
and then you know, three months down the road, there's another study mm -hmm. overlapping with the same area. Why should we be conducting the same thing? So can we change the kind of government mentality from a process oriented to a kind of timeline or target oriented, you know, way of doing things? No, I, I think certainly. Uh, if I do not believe <laughs> that could be changed, I, I won't try myself to get elected and you know join the legislative council. So I think there's a will, there's a way, and uh, it's, uh, it's all a matter of political will. And then uh, I think in the past several years we can you know kind of blame that you know blame the oppositions and you know blame the political uh, instability and that kind of things. But now is a different ballgame. So I think we should focus and make sure that it's not just uh, an improvement uh, on the side of the legislation or, or related regulations, that kind of things, but also on the administration system or administrative you know, kind of uh, segments. That uh, could easily uh, have impact on you know, continuous you know, kind of uh, procrastination, if I may. Uh, on you know the processing of uh, different kind of cases. Well, final question: uh, Do you think town planning ordinance should be amended, and how? No, I think every piece of uh, ordinance uh, would require uh, review you know, from time to time, and the town planning ordinance is not an exception, right? So uh, you know, we talk about you know engagement. You know that's one particular area we, we should look into. Uh, I mean, uh, one simple thing is that, say, for example, uh, in, in the latest uh, go, when we speak, we have time limit, right? So <laughs> <laughs> should that uh, uh, apply to planning, to, to planning process? I mean, uh, uh, there may be thousands of people have interest in, in expressing their, uh, you know, their own opinion, right? Okay, protecting their interest, that's fair. But, you know, if everybody can, it would be allowed, you know, uh, um, uh, so, so called, you know, a time without limit. You know, there's an analyst process. So these are simple examples that we, we can, you know, uh, look into. But I must stress, you know, planning is just one very minor part of the entire process. Mm. Uh, when you get the planning done, uh, we have to deal with land administration. We have to deal with uh, infrastructure development. We have to deal with buildings. You know, before we can live in a place or you know work in the place the entire process got hundreds of you know different you know administrative tasks which in my view has room to kind of to be streamlined thank you very much andrew welcome next episode uh, andrew will share with us his visions about hong kong being a smart city thank you very much for watching if you like our program please share and like and also subscribe to our friday everyday channel See you next time.